Back in 1851, at the University College of London, there was a South African mathematics student named Francis Guthrie who had been trying to prove the results about coloring maps. He brought his results to his mathematics professor, De Morgan, in hopes of getting some answers. De Morgan sadly could not answer all of his questions, so instead he wrote to another mathematician named Hamilton, saying, help me. But Hamilton replied, I'm not likely to attempt your quaternion of color very soon, which basically translates to, no, I will not help you. De Morgan continued his search for help in explaining his pupil's results. He continued to strike out. In the United States, another mathematician named Charles Pierce heard of these struggles and tried to attempt it himself, and he sent in his results to the London Mathematical Society, but sadly, most of his results were just struggles. In 1879, Alfred Bray Kemp published what he believed to be a proof of the four-color theorem through mathematical induction. Although Kemp's proof was later found to be incomplete, he provided many ideas used almost a century later by Appel and Haken in their complete computer-simulated proof. In 1889, Appel and Haken honored Kemp by declaring that his proof contained most of the ideas they used to complete their proof. The next mathematician to attempt a proof was P.G. Tate. Throughout his life, Tate provided a few incomplete proofs. In 1880, he found what he believed to be another proof to the four-color theorem. This was disproved a little more than a decade later by Julius Peterson. In 1890, Kemp's famous proof was disproven by Percy John Hewood. Hewood spent 60 years working on the four-color theorem. He published his first paper in 1890, where he produced a map disproving Kemp's proof for the case of a pentagon. Charles Jean de la Vallée Poussin was a Belgian mathematician. In 1896, he published a counterexample to Alfred Kemp's false proof of the four color theorem. The Poussin graph is a planar graph with 15 vertices and 39 edges. It is the graph he used for this counterexample. It is, of course, named after him. George David Birkhoff was an American mathematician who, in 1912, attempted to solve the four color theorem. In his attempt, he introduced the chromatic polynomial. The chromatic polynomial is a graph polynomial studied in algebraic graph theory. It gives the number of graph colorings as a function of the number of colors. And while this line of attack did not help solve the theorem, the polynomial itself became an important object of study in algebraic graph theory. Philip Franklin was an American mathematician and professor whose work was focused on analysis. His dissertation at Princeton University was the four-color problem, and he was supervised by Oswald Veblen, a famous topologist. In 1922, Franklin gave the first proof that all planar graphs with at most 25 vertices can be four-colored. Kenneth Appel and Wolfgang Haken, both math professors at the University of Illinois, finally proved the four color theorem in 1976, though their work was not published until 1977 in the Illinois Journal of Mathematics. However, Appel and Haken were only able to prove the four color theorem with computer power in IBM System 370 Model 168. This computer system made over 10 billion logical decisions and crunched numbers that were humanely unfeasible. In the end, the four color theorem was proved using 1,200 hours, about 50 days, of computations with a system that looked at uh, a necessary minimum of 1,476 different graph configurations. Many scholars question this proof because of the technological aid. How can we know that the computer isn't consistently making the same error that results in an erroneous proof? And what does this mean for future pro proofs? Can we rely on technology for all proofs, or should proofs only be done by hand? The steps taken by the computer could not, and still cannot, be checked by a human. Despite these concerns, many scholars accepted Appel and Haken's proof and worked to, to improve it. In 1997, four academics, Neil Robertson, Daniel P. Sanders, Paul Seymour, and Robin Thomas, made another breakthrough. They produced a shorter proof that only required three and a half hours of computer force and only 633 graph configurations. The four color theorem states that any map in a plane can be colored using four colors in such a way that regions sharing a common boundary other than a single point do not share the same color. 
The key to this is that any map can be represented as a planar graph. It is important that the graph is planar, which means that it can be drawn without any of the edges crossing. To four-color a map, you can start by drawing it as a graph. Each vertex represents a region, and each re edge represents a shared edge between two regions. And then we make an order list that contains each vertex that tells us what order to color the regions. To make the list, we will remove vertices with a degree less than four, one at a time. As we remove each vertex, each edge connected to them is also removed. After we have a list of every vertex, we can color our map, starting with the last vertex we removed and working back for the, through the list. Um, in this example, I have my map uh, written as a graph, and we start remo by removing Z, which has a degree of 2. And then I remove N and S, and so on through every single vertice until there's only two left. Once there are only two vertices left, we add those to the end of our list, and then starting at the end of our list, we color in each region one by one using a color that has not been used by any of their connecting regions. The reason that this list method works is because when you remove each vertex, its degree is less than four, so when you color them starting at the end of the list, the region you are coloring will never be touching more than three regions that have already been colored in, and so you never have to use more than four colors.